How are we going everybody? Now after a hard day's work in the garden brush cutting, I thought I'd come and do another hour here in the veggie garden. I'm going to prepare this for spring. So this is our spring preparation. First of many garden beds that I've got to clean up. Uh, as you know, we've had our chooks through the garden beds recently. They've cleaned them out for me pretty well. They've taken, meaning they've got rid of a lot of grubs in the soil. Things like lawn grub, which has migrated into our veggie gardens and flowering beds, and they, they eat the roots off your plants and cause the plants to wilt and die during the hotter periods of the year. And that's something that you've got to take control of, otherwise they multiply in the hundreds, if not thousands. And I kid you not about that because I've been invited to a few homes, asked to go out and inspect some of the, for example, petosporums that are about seven years of age. And one by one they started to die off and the owners couldn't tell what was going on. And sure enough, we dug out a, a petosporum, the one that was dead, no roots left at all, just a little root ball at the, the, at the base of the trunk and inside the soil full of lawn grubs. It's, they look like, cock, well, they look like witchetty grubs, cockchafers, white body, curl grub, you can probably recognize them by that name. Uh, they do curl around, they've got a brown or black head on them. And the adult is a beetle which flies and it can fly from one garden bed to another. There isn't a, well, there is, uh, there are nematodes, uh, uh, predator nematodes from EcoGrow online. I don't know if they still supply those or not. Uh, my advice is to go a natural way or get your chickens into the garden. That's what I've done here. I've sacrificed my winter garden, my broad beans, you know, my leafy greens are still doing okay. I've got some silver bed here, heap over there in the raised beds. This bed here had some lettuce. We've got a bit of uh, garlic, I think it is, or leek, I think that's actually leek. And we've got some mustard plants that have popped up. There's one, oh, there's one just there, nearly killed it. So what I'm gonna do here is turn the soil over, prepare it, get it ready for springtime. Um, and there's a heap of things that I like to do with my soil. Now, in the past, I've set a no-dig garden, which is great, it works well. But if you're struggling with your garden beds, things aren't growing well. And this bed here in particular, because it's down low, it doesn't do all that well for me. I've, I would like it to be better. I want to raise this bed. So instead of raising it now, I'm going to prepare it again by going back to basics. Doing what my father used to do when he was getting out in the garden. At the end of each season, he'd get out the pitchfork or garden fork and get stuck into it and take all the soil from down below and bring it on top. See that? Look how different the colour of that soil is. It's a lighter brown colour by comparison to the topsoil or compost that we've been adding in there. All those little white little roots you see there are actually weeds about to grow again. So don't despair when you see them. Disturb them by digging it over. Can I just say, folks, when it comes to preparing a garden bed, there's no just one simple way or one correct way in preparing a bed. You can do a no-dig garden, just keep layering it on top, put your mulch, your compost, your, your fertilizers, and just let it work its way through. Or you can go back and dig it over like this, or you can just dig little holes if you like. It's up to you really at the end of the day how much effort you want to put into preparing your garden bed. Aerating the soil is important just as much as it is not digging it over, but if you've got an anaerobic garden bed, and that means a garden bed that's not breathing, not draining well, in particular beds that are down low like this one here, they need to be aerated. Now you can just go around and do this, right, and aerate it like that. And why do I mean by aeration? Because there's good and bad bacteria in the garden as there is in the world, everywhere. And if you've got the bad bacteria, that means your garden bed's anaerobic, it's not getting the airflow it wants, it becomes stale. And then you plants start to suffer. If you've got enough plants growing in your garden bed, bigger roots, they're going to aerate it for you. But to get the plants to grow to that stage, you've got to prepare the garden bed to start with. And that means digging it over. If your bed's already draining well and all that, well, don't listen to me. Just dig a little hole, plant your seedling in it, sit back and watch it grow. At the moment, I'm going to dig this. We've turned it over now, folks. Now what I'm going to be adding into this garden bed is chicken manure. You can use sheep, you can use cow, you can use goat, you can use rabbit, you can use any sort of green leafy eating animal you like. At the end of the day, they all have a purpose, they all have a different nutrient base because they all digest differently. Um, obviously chicken, cow, 
and sheep are the three main ones you can use and horse, I keep forgetting about horse. But make sure it's aged manure today, I'm gonna to use chicken, next time I'm gonna use sheep. And if I wanna use some horse, I will in the next garden bed. And the idea about that is so you can rotate your, your, your nutrients, I suppose the, the organic matter you're adding into your garden bed. I'm also adding worm castings. Um, I've got some worm castings here. They only need a handful or two in this area here, so you don't put a lot, because they are one of the richest source of uh, nutrients you can give to your garden bed as well as this chicken menu, obviously, I'm gonna be putting in. And at the end of the day, I'm putting my black grit as well, because this is a soil amendment fertilizer which balances it all out for you. It doesn't become too acidic, it doesn't become too alkaline. It actually releases some phosphate into the soil, natural occurring phosphates, because no chemicals at all. Um, and calcium, and calcium is one of the secrets to a successful garden, being able to grow bigger, stronger leafy plants, flowering plants, fruiting plants, and stronger roots with the phosphate. But the purpose of this is that it works in the sense that it doesn't dissolve when you add it into your garden bed unless the soil is excessively rich. And that happens with your manures. Sometimes you put too much horse manure or chicken manure and you over fertilize the garden, becomes too acidic. So that will balance it out and stop that from burning your plants. Now you probably hear from your local friends or garden centers what type of manure to use or even some fertilizer, synthetic fertilizer. Now, you all know me really well by now, I think. I mean, for those of you who just started following me, hey, here's a story. I don't use synthetic fertilizers in my garden. I don't put chemicals in my garden. I'd rather see an infested garden with weeds and you know all the little microbes and the insects enjoying themselves and feeding on here. Because I've got a big garden bed and I can eat here from here for my family as, as long as I want. I've got no issues about that. I know many of you may have small garden beds, courtyard garden beds, but that's no reason to go and turn towards a synthetic fertilizer or a chemical uh, insecticide to play to spray or fertilize your garden bed. All you're doing is killing off the living organisms in the soil, the microbes, the fungi and all that. And eventually what you're doing to your garden bed is causing it to become inert and reliant on you of, by fertilizing it. So you need to constantly add it there because there's nothing in there that can create it for you. And I'm talking about the microbial activity that exists within this soil. This stuff down here, folks, is full of life. Now, if you want to add your synthetic fertilizers or somebody tells you put some, I don't know, a five to one mixture of fertilizer or, or complete garden mix, whatever they want to call it, that stuff there over time is going to kill your garden, kill your plants and eventually make you sick too. It's a fact, I don't make this stuff up. I've seen it, I've, it's happened, <laughs> it's happening. Get back to basics, get involved in your garden, but ground yourself and get stuck into that smelly stuff, that shit stuff there, <laughs> that stuff there is excellent. So no more whinging and talking for silly. Let's put some chicken manure into this garden bed. Now this manure has been aged, right? It's come out of a chicken coop uh, from a local guy down the road. Natural chicken coop, no chemicals, no, they're not housed in there. They're not treated with any sort of pills and things like that. So I've got plenty of manure in my, my little chicken house, but I'm gonna use some of this stuff in here. Like I said earlier, I'm gonna try different stuff. This was given to me to trial out. They guarantee me it's pretty safe. Uh, so let's hope it is. If it does well in a garden bed, I've had a look at the place, there's nothing in there to worry about as far as what they grow and how they grow their, their chooks. So a bit of chicken manure. And unlike your sheep manure, you're not gonna pour a whole bag in this area. It doesn't need that much. It'll cause, it doesn't need it, simple. It'll make it rich, you put the black grid, it'll balance it out, but there's no need to add that much into it. This is about three square meters, right? And I'd say about half a bag would be enough. Again, you get what you pay for if you're buying your stuff. And if you go for the cheapest product on the shelf, expect the, the, the worst results. Well, not the worst, but really average results. But sometimes, folks, you just might get lucky. You might buy the cheapest thing and get the best results, hey? It's like winning Tats Lotto. <laughs> I've never won. And now the worm castings. What does it say here? Directions. To, worm castings to be used liberally on soil. 20 litres per thousand square metres. That's a quarter of an acre. 4,000 square metres in an acre. This is only three square metres, 20 litres. How many threes in a the thousand? There's 30 in 100, 300. I'm gonna divide this into three hundred portions. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> just put it on, enjoy it. If you put too much, well, it's not gonna burn your plants, you're just gonna breed more microbes and fungi. 
that's it. And now our black red. Now, I say a handful per square metre, which, which is comfortable. But if you go to my mum's house, <laughs> it's a handful per pot. That's what she does. <laughs> Try to get it everywhere, but we are going to mix it through anyway. This is made from volcanic rock, folks, if you want to know what it is. It's not, there's nothing else in the market like it. So if anybody says they haven't got black grit on the shelf, but we've got something else that's called black something, it's not the same. <laughs> okay, with all respect to everybody else's product, it may be great. I haven't used it, but this isn't um, anything else. It's just black grit. Now we're going to dig it over. Now, I'm not going to be planting into this garden bed here, folks. I'm going to be pulling these weeds out. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm preparing it now for spring planting. So once my seedlings are ready, they'll be going into this garden bed. And in the meantime, this one's just going to rest. I'm going to give it a water and let it all settle in. Let the microbes start breeding, getting ready as the warmer sun, the warm sun comes out and starts to heat up the soil for us. That will start to breed beautifully. Once the seedlings are ready, we'll pop them into the ground. I don't know what I'm planting in here yet. I haven't decided. Maybe basil, we've got our five basil range. Put this year I'm gonna do it in order, that's what I'm gonna do. I've been told, I've been asked to start planting in, in little rows. Maybe not big rows like you know a hundred down the road. I'll put five or six down in here, three rows or three different basils, and maybe I'll do the other side as well with some basil. Hey mate, how are ya? Hey Jack, you good? Now for those who know Jack, um, he's not well. He's, when he was a little, little puppy, folks, he was hit by a car and his right paw, as you can see it there, this little paw here, from the last ankle joint down here, his nerve, uh, well, there was nerve damage, it was cut off, so he's got no sensation. It's a floppy paw, what we would call it. So he's a three and a half legged dog and he, um, he was the fastest dog on the park, uh, chasing balls and that. But, you know, as he got older, He's uh, autoimmune, kicked in. <laughs> Sorry about that. Vader, 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 come over here, mate. Come here, mate, come here. <laughs> look at him, have a look at him. So he's got an autoimmune problem going on. He's self-destructing, unfortunately. Um, and we've been looking after him as best we can. He's like a wombat now. He's at the stage now where we're gonna give him a wheelchair, front leg, front wheelchair. So stay tuned for that one too. Some exciting times ahead because Jack loves his ball and dogs, you know, unlike us, we don't, we whinge like crazy. They don't whinge. They just get on with it. They accept it and he's fantastic. Um, and we love him to death. He's been with us eight years now. Um, and we hope we'll get at least another four or five out of him. But we just gotta take care of him. Hey, Wombat, how you going? Hey, how are you, buddy? <laughs> love you to death. Now I'm not putting any EK Butch and Liquid Gold on this one yet folks. I'm just going to hydrate it for now. If you've got the Liquid Gold and EK Butch, and you feel like it, by all means, give it a good soaking with that there. For me, it's just a light hydration. And after that, I'm going to put the mulch on top. And I'm using bean straw. That's what I've got at the moment. <laughs> you can use garden straw, lucerne, pea straw, whatever, you, whatever straw you can find at your local garden centre. They all have a purpose. Some are better than others. Bean straw at the moment, for me, the benefit of bean straw is you get bugger all beans growing out of them. Unlike your pea straw, which just takes over the garden, this, this stuff here has been pretty good for me. So that's what we're going to put on top. Oh yeah, this is already breaking down. How good is this? Look at that. See all that there? It's breaking down now, so that's telling you all the microbes and the fungi are starting to take off. We're going to spread it on the garden and spread the love. It's a lot lighter than your typical Pea straw, not round pieces, they're flat and not as long as well, so easier to spread. But I guess, folks, it really depends on your local supplier. If you can't find it, don't despair, just get what they have there and spread it out about 50 mil to maybe 100 mil thick, if you like. If it's really, see, so this stuff's wet and it's already compacted, so if I put it on really thick at this sort of thick wetness it won't get any flatter. You want it to finish off around 50 mil. So if it's, a, if it's a dry mix, it'll be fluffier. There'll be more air pockets. So you can put it at about 100 mil thick. But if it's uh, wet like this, spread it out thinner. Here we are. It does look good when you put the mulch on, doesn't it, folks, hey? 
I've got one down and I've probably got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, two, four, two, six, twenty-eight more beds like this to go. <laughs> okay. Well, I've got my work cut out for me, haven't I? So you two got to get out there and prepare your garden for spring planting. It's only around the corner. Get your seedlings or seeds in into the little mini hothouses or just buy your seedlings from your local garden centre. Support your local garden centres. Do all the wonderful stuff we need to do while we're in lockdown. And it's, you know, at the moment, I don't think it's going to go away anytime soon. So take advantage of your own little garden in your backyard, courtyard, whatever size garden, however big or small it is, get out there and get involved. You'll find how much relaxing it is. It'll be relaxing and calming for you too, as it is for me. This is what I love doing. I don't get to do enough of it. Unfortunately, I don't get enough time during the day to, to get out here as often as I'd like. I mean, we're on 20 acres. I'm hedging at the moment for the last three, four weeks, and I hope to finish in the next couple of weeks, which I should have enough time to get back into this spring garden. And you should be doing the same thing too. Go to, get out there, prepare your, your veggie garden or your flowering garden bed for your spring summer plantings to enjoy. And if you need some tips and advice, well, you know what you can do you can tune into 3AW if you're watching this just as it's been uploaded uh, you'll find out that if you switch over to 3AW we'll actually be live there me and Darren gardening this weekend talking all things about plants any way we can help you give us a call maybe you've got some great ideas and tips that you can share with us as well because we'd love to hear from you and because it's a 3AW weekend we are doing a crazy sale again we hold sales every day folks but on the weekend it's going to be bigger it's up to 70% off everything online black grid up to 75% off. I think we've got the four kilos twin pack for 20 bucks. I, I, I struggle to say that because it is so dirt cheap. Normally 79.90, you get it for 20 bucks, a pair of them, that's eight kilos of the stuff so you can get it into your garden and tune into 3AW and enjoy some great gardening talk and also check out our website, vasilisgarden.com. From me, Vasili, Maresi. Hey guys, what are you doing? Huh? Oh, Kara. You wanna play ball? What's the ball? Ha <laughs> ha